What if I told you that I never would have made it? Made it. Uh, if he never came to take me. And I really thought I didn't need shaving. Shaving. Yeah, yeah. Now I need him on the daily. I've been around, round, round, round. So many people let me down, 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 down. down. There's no Welcome to today's um, session. Um, welcome to the table, DC. I want to thank you so much for being with us um, again. Thank you for sharing this link with somebody. Thank you for, for even just praying for the ministry, for praying for a friend or somebody you might know who might need to hear the word of God or hear the encouragement of God today. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to delve into the word of God. But before we do, I just want to say a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you because you are with us throughout every situation and your word says where one or two are gathered or two or three are gathered in your name, Lord God, you are there and you command your blessing to be there, Lord God. Father God, as we are gathered around our mobile phones, around in these various ways of connecting, Lord God, we know and trust that you are with us, Lord God, and you're the one who's going to speak through me, Lord God, and help others understand your, the truth of your word and come to the true revelation. Of the, of, of, of the good news that you've set for us, Lord God. Father God, we thank you and we give you all the praise and glory for um, what we're about to receive from you, Lord God, today at the table. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And if you said a big amen, I want you to just in the chats, in the comments, just say amen along with your brothers and sisters. Let's get into the word of God. So some of you may know that we've been going through the book of Galatians together at the table and getting to know what Paul's passionate plea is to the church of Galatia, especially with a particular issue that's been going on um, in that church that day. And I think there's some, there's some key things and key things that we can take away um, and, and live those truths in our now, in the, in the midst of all these situations that we find ourselves in. So in the book of Galatians, he tells them, look, so he tells them that, look, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned because all of a sudden you guys have turned away from the truth. You've turned away from the God who called you out of, out, who called you out of, 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 of sin and darkness to himself and, and have started listening to a, a gospel that pretends to be the good news. That's in verse chapter in, in, in Galatians 1 verse 6, that pretends to be the good news. So many times we find ourselves listening to things that pretend to be the good news of God, but they're not the, the good news. They're not the truth that God has promised to us. They're not the, gr the grace and the goodness of God that has been promised to us that we need to hold on to the truth of our salvation the grace that we that at times things of this world will try and send messages people might try and send messages people might come on lives and try and tell us things that are, uh, tell us lies that aren't the truth of god's word and that's what was happening in the church in that time the, the, paul was writing to a church or writing to a group of people who were being told things that was contrary with the promise that God had wanted for them, the promise that God had for them, the promise of the finished work that Christ had completed for them. And he was telling them that, look, look, 
why have you turned away from the one who, who gave you this promise? And, and, and the thing is, they were being tricked into going back to the things of the law, things that, oh, that, that, that they didn't need to. That he was telling them, look, if there's anybody that should be telling you to be legalistic, if there's anybody who should be trying to heap so much pressure on you, pressure to be right, pressure to be perfect, it should be me because I was considered to be perfect. That's Paul he's speaking. He, he was considered to be perfect. He was considered to be the Jew of the Jews. But actually understand this, that, that the Christ has called us to a yoke and a burden which he calls as being light. He said he calls us to, to take his burden upon ourselves and to, to exchange our heavy burdens, take off our heavy burdens, the things that weigh us down and easily beset us. We're to give them to him and take on the promise, take on the blessing, the finished work that he has done for us. In chapter three of, of, of the book of Galatians, we also see uh, um, Paul talking to them and, 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 and confirming to them that look, the, the, what we've been called into is that we shouldn't be conceit and confused that there's a difference between the law and faith. There's a difference between um, 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 the rules and faith and especially faith in Christ, faith, faith in, 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 the, in the finished work of Christ. Because what we, we are now doing is we receive the, right, the righteousness of Christ through our faith. We don't receive it in, 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 in any other way, but through our faith. Because once we were of the world, yes. Once the world had its hold on us. Once, yes, we were considered dirty before God. Once we were considered outside of his family, not, a, not, not one of these people, we were considered Gentiles. But actually what happened was, if we see in verse, verse 13 of Galatians 3, it says that Christ, became the, um, it, it, we, we, we see here that it says that, but Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. We were under, living under a curse of sin. When you, when you ask anybody, have you ever, like you see so many people walking around and saying, look, you know what, I'm a good person. I'm a good person, yeah, 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 I'm a good person, I'm a good person. Like, I, 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 on, a, on a day to day, I'm good. Like, I might, I, I might not do this, I might not do that, but overall I'm good, but actually because of the original sin of man, every single person was considered dirty before God. There was sin because if you say, okay, have you ever told a lie before? <sighs> have you ever, have you ever, by Jesus' standard, have you ever been angry at your brother before? Have you ever looked at a woman lustfully before? <laughs> Come on guys. By the standards of the or, 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 of by the standards of the law, or even by the standards of Christ, look, that's considered a sin. So actually, in, in in because every single one of us has sinned before God, the Bible tells us that but cursed was, cursed, there was a curse on mankind. But because Jesus in verse 13 but Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law it was because of the things of the law that we were cursed okay and because of that curse we couldn't be as heirs children of Christ when he was hung on the cross he took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoings so it was written curse is anyone who hangs on a tree so in that way Christ became the curse that's how much he loved you and I. He became the curse. He became the thing that God hated so much just so he could pay that price. That could mean that we could become part of the kingdom. We could be part of the children of God, part of the promise of God and partakers in that promise of God. And what was the promise of God? Look, the promise was that there would come one who would restore man back to God. God has been working a way to get just to you. Look, there's a same thing we say at the head of the table, like look, no matter who you are, where you are, no matter what your past has been like, no matter what you might have been struggling through, understand this, God has been working throughout everything just to make sure that he can come to a restored relationship with you. So don't let anybody pull you away from that. So look, in verse 13, we, we understand, yes, that Christ became the curse, but then also we now understand that, okay, so what was the purpose of the law? Why was the law given? Because 
let's be real. The Old Testament is a big is a, is a big chunk of, 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 of a biblical book if you were to look at it in terms of size and everything like that. So what was the purpose of the law? What was the purpose of the Torah? And in verse, in, in, in verse, in verse 19, we, we see here that look, why then, Paul, Paul, Paul then writes to us, why then, why then was the law given? It was given alongside the promise to show the people their sins, to show us what sin was, to show us actually this is what's right and this is what's wrong. Because you've now fallen out, I need to now show you what is right from wrong. Because you've now fallen out of the kingdom, out of the garden, for me, I'm showing you what, 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 what's wrong. So, um, but the law was designed to only last until the coming of the child that was promised. God gave the law through angels to Moses, who was a mediator between God and his people. So look, the law was a temporary thing. The law was just supposed to be there until the promised child would come. Because what was the promised child coming to do? The promised child was coming to restore man back to God so that man can be in the way he was with God when he was walking with God in the garden. The law was there to show us, okay, to be a guide. We, we, we read further in, in, in Galatians chapter 4 that we see that the law is there as a guide to us in the same way that the father, a father who dies and leaves a will might leave instructions, specific instructions for a two-year-old to say, look, these are the things that I'm leaving as instructions for you. But when you come of age, this is what you, this is all your inheritance. And your inheritance, I now want you to use it the way you see, see fit. But because you've been taught by the guide, actually you didn't understand the principles. Let's put it a sim another way. If you're riding a bicycle for the first time, and you're a two-year-old, three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old, 15-year-old, 30-year-old learning to ride a bicycle, you might use stabilizers, for example. Stabilizers aren't supposed to be there forever. The stabilizers are supposed to only be temporary to keep you in an upright position. But even sometimes you see somebody using stabilizers and actually they're wobbling around. But the purpose of the stabilizers is so that actually there will become a time when you will come into a full knowledge and understanding of, okay, this is what it means to be upright. And there'll be something that will come. There's something that you just get in you. You've just received the ability to balance yourself on a bicycle and you no longer need the stabilizers. In the same way, as believers, when we come to a place of accepting Jesus Christ, we now get the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is God on the inside of us. So now we don't need the law to be our guide, but now we have a true guide who lives on the inside of us. And he's the one who stabilizes us. He's the one who keeps us in right standing. And we receive that, not because we've now worked out ourselves how to keep ourselves upright, no, but because of the faith that we have in the, in the finished work of God, because of the faith that we have in the cross because our belief in Christ that's what keeps us upright that's what gives us the the, the the ability to actually walk in the inheritance that Christ has has made possible for us through God so the law is made to be temporary the law is not bad the law is not inaccurate it's not that Christ came to say look you don't need to do this anymore no Christ came to be the fulfillment of the law the same way that you rode without stabilizers, the same objective was for you to stand upright with, st with stabilizers. Now the way you've, you've taken away the stabilizing, you've taken away the law. It's not that you've taken away the risk, the, the, you're no longer bound by the curse of the law, but the right standing with God is something that is still paramount. So don't let anybody confuse you and think, okay, yeah, I don't need to, I don't need to do the, um, the things of the law. I can do whatever I like. I can live how I like. No, because if you're doing that, that means you've not come to a place where you actually understand what it means to be balanced, what it means to be right standing upright, what it means to be cycle pedaling your bike upright. What you're probably doing is keeping on falling down, falling back into the law, falling back into the curse of sin. So Galatians chapter five then comes and tells us that look, look, what is, the most important thing, verse um, Galatians five six tells us that the most important what is the what is most important is faith expressing itself through love. So our belief in God expressing itself in love. So instead of us getting ourselves worked up on um, 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 the, um, am I circumcised, not circumcised, like they were before, or worrying to yourself about oh have I done this? Have I? It's 
if, if you are living a life led by the Holy Spirit, it means that, okay, am I living a life where my faith is expressing itself in love? Jesus was, 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 was given, a, given a, a trick question, given a trick question, which was, which is the greatest commandment? And when he answered, <laughs> he gave them a trick answer. <laughs> love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and mind. And the second is same like unto it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. In the first answer, he gave them the full first part of the law. In the second answer, he gave them the full second part of the law. And in sense said, look, all the law is important. But when you are showing love, when you are loving God, when you are loving your neighbors, actually that's meaning that you are, 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 are fulfilling the law. So your faith has to be being expressed in love. For me, the, the fantastic thing about um, the book of Galatians, verse 13, is Paul comes and gives us almost a, a, a push in the right direction that says, look, for in verse 13, it says, for you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, not, um, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. What's he calling us to say? Instead of, instead of taking our freedom, he's saying, look, our freedom is there to serve one another. Our freedom isn't there for us to sin. Our freedom is there for us to actually go out and say, look, the things that tells me I'm not, I'm not worthy enough to pray for someone. I'm not worthy enough to, to, to go and, and, and speak a word of encouragement over someone. I'm not worthy enough to go and speak the good news. Actually, because of grace, because of the work that Christ has done, it means that we actually have that freedom to go and serve someone in love. We have that freedom to go forth and serve in love. So that grace that we have, that, 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 that finished work that Christ did becoming the curse for us means that actually, instead of the law holding us back and saying, mm, I've not quite washed my hands enough today. I've not got my mask on as I'm coming into, no, 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 that. Instead, I am free, not just to do anything I like, no, I am free to serve. Because there's a lot of us sometimes are speaking to someone and they're like, look, I want to do more. I want to, I want to do more for the kingdom. I want to be like, I've got a heart for people, but there's so much in me that, 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 that I, I feel like, I feel like I need to get certain stuff right. And, and the, the weirdest thing is actually, there's so many people who are looking for someone to pray for them, to, 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 um, to reach out to them and just say, how are you doing? Or something along those lines, like in, especially in these times. And if we're too worried about, am I perfect enough to serve? Actually, what the scripture here is telling us that we have been put into freedom so we can serve. But sometimes we are used, trying to use that freedom as justification to sin. It's not justification to sin because then you're lying to yourself because you're living in sin. So if we have now been called into freedom so that we can serve not sin what we're supposed to be doing is living a life that is led by the spirit of god living a life that is led by the spirit of god because if we are living a life where we're thinking that we're free to sin what we're doing is we're having allowing the, our flesh which galatians talks about allowing our flesh to be the one that is winning the war that's going on on the inside of us there is a war going on between, in, in every single person. Before you were saved, the war is being waged with only one party, your flesh, full control, full reign over what you desire to do. But when you become saved, you now have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, the personhood of God living on the inside of you. And now there becomes a thing where actually the Spirit of God, the, the, the desires of the Spirit of God, the desires that the Spirit of God puts into you are opposite to the desires of your flesh. They're opposite to the nature of sin. They're opposite. They are the nature of the, 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 the Spirit of God gives you the desires of God. And now because the two are at war, if we are living a life led by the Spirit, if what we're doing is we're saying that the Spirit of God is the one that's supposed to be controlling me. The Spirit of God is the one that's supposed to be directing me, giving my all instructions, be, be, be in control of every facet, every aspect of my life. 
And what happens in Galatians is we see that there are two different types of things that happen. The results of when the spirit of our flesh wins, there are fruits that are born out of that. The fruits are fruits like um, um, sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfishness, <laughs> um, selfish am ambitions, dis um, dis um, dissension, division, envy, darkness, wicked, par um, um, wicked parties, yeah. um, and other sins like these. That's what happens when our flesh wins the war that's going on on the inside. But then we hear what happens after that. The fantastic thing that happens when the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit himself, is the one that is bearing fruits in our life, the one that's winning the war. What happens is now we start to produce the fruits of the spirit. The fruits of the spirit are what? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And against these, there is no law. When you are living a life led by the Spirit against the fruits that you're producing, there's no law. Don't let anybody tell you that they're, oh, ugh, you can do this, you can't do that. You can, when, if, 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 if people try to give you a false gospel, read the word for yourself. Commune with the Holy Spirit. Ask yourself, is it my flesh that's winning this or is it my spirit that's winning this? Is it me giving myself to my old desires or is it me listening to the, 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 to the things of the spirit? Because this, uh, this, the, the, the Holy Spirit only testifies of what he hears from the Father and he won't come to lead us into any, any falseness. No, he comes to lead us into truth, into all truth. So, knowing that we have been set free from the curse of sin because of the finished work of Christ. We don't listen to um, 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 another form of gospel that might be tried to push on us. But we know that we've been set free, not to sin, but to serve one another in love so that we can produce the fruits of the spirit. And, and those can be evidence of the transformation that's taken place inside of us. But what I like about Paul is at the end of the chapter, the end of the book in, in chapter six, he sort of gives us, because we're, um, we're, we, we deal with one another, we live with um, one another, we walk with one another, we share with one another. If there is a point where we see one of our brothers or sisters who is struggling and has fallen away from what is right, it doesn't mean that we turn a blind eye and we say nothing. Actually, no, what we're supposed to do, Paul gives us an instruction here in, 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 in chapter six, verse one. He says that, look, that we, we, if a believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back on the right path. I love the fact that Paul tells us to do it gently and humbly. Why gently and humbly? Because look, we need to remember the grace that was on our lives and not use our arrogance. Because at times it's not the people who are um, unbelievers who will try and force legalism. Sometimes it's us, us as believers. So my charge to believers out there is to live a life that is free so that you can serve, but then also to gently and humbly serve others in love and correct others in love and show, show the love of God to other people. Show them the right way. Show them, show them the balanced way to stay upright by living a life that is led by the Spirit and correct them in love and gentleness and humility. Because look, the most important thing of all this, Galatians chapter six, verse 15, the <laughs> it doesn't matter whether or not you're circumcised or not. What counts is whether you have been transformed into a new creation. It doesn't matter whether or not you are covering your head or you're, or, 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 or you're wearing a tracksuit to church. What matters is whether or not you have been transformed by the gospel. Make sure that we are living a life that's transformed. And if you, if, if you, wanna, if you wanna check whether or not, am I living a life that's transformed? Check the fruits that you're bearing. 
check the fruits that you're bearing. If, if the fruits that you are bearing are of love, peace, joy, patience, against this there is no law. And in that confidence, in that confidence, you know that the, com the, the, the commission to you, the charge to you is for you to go out there and serve one another in love. Believers, we need to be making sure that we are out there serving people in love. There are so many different ways you can serve one another in love. You can serve serve people in love by, 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 by picking up the phone and calling someone who really needs to hear from, um, from God. Picking up the phone and, 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 and doing, sending someone a nice message. Um, um, you could be giving to um, um, charities. You could be giving to people who are in need in this time. You could be, there was, you could be um, 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 praying for people, interceding for people, interceding for this nation, interceding for your nation, interceding for, your, for, for your, the company that you work for, your boss, interceding for your business, interceding for your business partners, interceding for your teachers, for, for, for your lecturers, because we have been set free so that we can serve and we can do it. We're not doing it on our own strength. We're not doing it on our own authority. We're not, we're not, we're not doing it with our own our might. We're doing it because, through the inheritance that we now have because we are children of God and living in that promise that he made for us. Look, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, let's go out there and let's live free to serve and not sin but so that we can show that we are transformed from the inside because of the finished work of Christ and we can have the evidence of this through the fruits of the spirit that we're bearing God bless you God keep you and your families until we speak again take care I know you're tired saying Jesus take the wheel it's never ever late to come back home I'm sick and tired of doing it alone. I've been around, round, round, round. So many people and me down, 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 down. There's nowhere I can go that your love won't reach me right on time. Cause it don't matter where you come from. It only matters where you go. So